Saturday everyone, welcome to another Outdoor Intrigue adventure. If you're not watching this on a Saturday, don't worry, it'll be a Saturday again soon. Um, we're here on a beautiful, sunny, early autumn day in the Highlands. We're in Argyle <clears throat> and we're heading up uh, towards Ben Kruichen. We're going to do the Foreman Rose. Ben Kruichen and the other three that surround it, I've forgotten their names. Don't worry, throughout the video we'll make sure we <laughs> tell you what the names of them are and we'll show you the stats for the for the hike as well because I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a couple of thousand meters of ascent though. The plan is basically, it is just gone 11 o'clock, usual slightly late start for us on a Saturday. Been working all week so we, we can be forgiven. Is head up and we're gonna hit three Monroes and then end on Ben Kruichen which is the fourth and wild camp up there tonight and watch sunset, take it easy in the morning, watch sunrise, hopefully gonna be cloud inversions tomorrow morning um, yeah, it's pretty perfect weather, if anything, slightly too warm, to be honest, for this time of year. But that's the plan at the moment. We're going to have to keep an eye on water, because we're going to be up high a lot of the time, and we're going to be drinking a lot. I think it's around 13, 14, 15 degrees already. It should be getting up to 17, 18. So, yeah. Stick with us. We'll show you how it goes. Got a new pack on. Tell you about that later. Our, um, our weight's feeling pretty good at the moment as well. I'll speak about that some more shortly. Right, let's get some miles in. That's the main thing, isn't it, guys? <laughs> Having a good snack there, aren't you? That's us come off the trail. So you follow a track up to a couple of hundred meters up and then you cut off pretty steeply up this way, really steeply. <laughs> it's a hell of a gradient going up that way, isn't it? Yeah, you can't tell from here quite. That breeze is nice. Oh, that's lovely. It's really warm. But that breeze, that's beautiful. Here comes Maggie's up this steep pull that we just did, which is probably the hardest part of the whole route. I'll tell you that for sure at the end, but I imagine it will be just because of the gradient. So you come up sort of a track to about 150 meters of altitude. You start at 50 from where you park, come up 100 meters, then you cut off trail. Turn this way so that the wind's not so bad. You cut off trail and uh, sort of head straight up to 550 meters. So. 400 meter straight pull, hell of a gradient as well. Really steep. It's a beautiful breeze up here though. So now we can cool down a bit. Because uh, the views are stunning this way. Just gorgeous. Yeah. Back down this way. Steep pull that, huh? Really steep. Really steep, really hot. Really thankful for this breeze. Oh, this breeze is just beautiful. Uh, as soon as I popped out into it, I was like, thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool, to be honest. That's nice. Back towards Ben Louis that way. You can see Ben Lauren still binning. Yeah. Beautiful day. Jeez, the visibility is incredible. All around. There's Ben Kruchen opposite. And this is our route up here to the summit. That is the plan. All right, onwards. Ah. 
Here comes Maggie's. This is the first Monroe Summit right here, Ben Eunuch, and it is 989 meters up. And you start at 50 meters, so above sea level, so it's a good pull. 939 meters of ascent, it's pretty much straight up. It's the toughest part of the whole route. And uh, so almost a shame we're not wild camping up here because there's a great spot on the summit for anyone that ends up here. Right next to the summit, Ken, you've got this little bit of flat in here that would be great for a tent. Stunning views today. I mean, just the whole of the highlands opening up. Sorry about the wind noise. It's actually windier than it was forecast to be. It did say that the southwestern mountains were gonna be the windiest and that is where we are, but it still didn't say that there was gonna be this much wind. It's nice and cool though, because of the wind, otherwise it'd be really quite warm. Over towards Van Kruk and just starting. The views are incredible, huh? Yeah. Summit one. In the bag. Sweaty work. <laughs> wow. Just gorgeous. back up to 980 so not too bad. Pretty nice descent, well path. Jeez, like the dust in this bit. Yeah, full on. Hopefully we'll move back out of there as we come up though, so. On the summit of the second Monroe of the day, two down, two more to go. This one's Ben Achochel, 980 meters up. It's not much of a pull really. Once you drop down off of Ben Einich, it's only a couple of hundred meters back up, so nothing too much. But now we've got to drop right down and then climb back up about 580 meters out and then head around to Ben Kruchen. So that'll be the tiring part. So far, so good. Feeling strong, might have some Oreos. <laughs> That's the update. back to Hiker Trash Lunch. What's on the menu today? On the, on the trash menu today is fuel, 10k, squeeze and go, chocolate, peanut butter. I highly recommend this stuff by the way, it's got a lot of calories in it and it tastes really good. And one, un banane, <laughs> one banana. And then what you do, now pay attention because this bit gets complicated for those of you that aren't really Chefs, oh, it's quite stodgy this. It's surprising that peanut butter is so stodgy, isn't it? Looks a little bit like... <laughs> what you do is you take it and you squeeze it liberally. Yeah, don't be shy. No, but you've got to be careful you don't accidentally start dribbling it all over the floor. Right. Mm -hmm. And now, this, this masterpiece. Oh, oh, 
Is peanut butter not a creation? Mm. And then... So cloy. <laughs> Watching a wild Ben in his natural habitat. It's delicious, right? But I can't actually chew it. <laughs> He's caught his prey. His prey being a banana. Let's watch him devour it. Almost choked there. This is incredible. It's so ta honestly so tasty. Often I'll bring a wrap and just squish this down into a wrap. I don't always bring a banana because it's reasonably heavy, but I just quite felt like a banana. Delicious. I have a Trek bar for lunch. Hey everyone, <laughs> coming at you with an update. Um, <clears throat> we just dropped down, I say we just, we, we've stopped and had a little bit of food, but prior to that, we dropped down off of the second Monroe of the day it's a really steep drop. You come down just over 400 meters and um, the gradient on it is intense. It's very, very steep. So you really have to go quite slowly, to be honest. It's just, you can't really go that fast on that ground. And I'm all for fast descents, but that was, that was tricky. Um, <clears throat> and then we came down into this Bila, found some running water. So we dropped just slightly out the wind, sat and had our lunch, delicious, as you'll see. And, uh, I've reluctantly decided to fill up on water because I've looked at the map and the chances of us hitting any water because we're now going straight up this other side behind me, coming up onto the ridge and then we follow the ridge round and hit the next two Monroes really up high and it doesn't look like there's any other water sources unless we get lucky and there's sort of a big puddle or something. Um, so yeah, I've filled up the water bag and both bottles and we've drank loads of water. So I've got, we've got three litres with us now, <clears throat> which we know is normally enough. So fingers crossed, should be all right. We just need enough for uh, rehydrating meals tonight and then coffee and porridge in the morning, ideally. So that should be good. But yeah, pretty full of snacks and water now. Probably need to go and walk it off. So that was steep. For anyone that comes to do this, normally most people generally will do each of the two Monroes separately. So Ben Kroken and whatever the other one is, I've completely forgotten. <coughs> and Ben Ienich, Ienich and... I've forgotten the name. Jesus, I'm not doing well today. I can't Achwell. remember. It's a really hard one to pronounce. Yeah, Achwell, Achwell. Yeah, I've got Munro blank, but <coughs> we can always insert the names. So yeah, they would do them separately. But if you want to join them up, which you 100% can, it just is a bit of a bigger day. And uh, you just need to be aware that when you come off of the second, either way that you do it, when you come off of and down into this BLAC, it's going to be really steep coming down and then really steep coming out the other side. So factor that in. But yeah, that's it. We've got to pull up now. That'll be a, that'll be a, that'll be probably one of the toughest bits of the day, apart from the start. Everything else is going well. No issues. Maggie's knees are feeling pretty good at the moment. Her mm -hmm. Apple Watch is very annoyed. The update on iOS has caused her battery to like completely die almost. Or very, very frustrated about that, Apple. I'll be writing a strongly worded dear email Apple. to you. Dear Apple, your iOS 7 update has not really added any new features except for a hand washing timer and it's caned the battery in four hours. I'm very upset. Yeah, so she's annoyed, so charging it up at the moment on the power bank. And um, <clears throat> my new pack that I've um, got, drag it over here. This is um, a Bonfus, what a name, I know, Bonfus Iterus uh, 38 litre and it is a DCF pack, so what used to be called Cuban fibre um, and it is extremely light, it's frameless. They're a Norwegian company that are based in Italy and I think they make their gear in Mexico, so they're pretty international, but they ship to the UK which is really cool, so they do lightweight tents, very lightweight tents, backpacks and a few accessories and I really wanted to try some of their stuff out and, and see because you know it's nice to have European manufacturers especially when you don't have to pay huge import fees from the US. So this one, um, oh, I, can't, I can't remember what the price was, I think it was a couple of hundred euros, I mean it's not cheap but it's not horrific either. I think with shipping it came in about 200 quid, yeah. So yeah, it's, you know, it, it isn't cheap for a backpack but if you're into this kind of backpack it's, it's a pretty good price. The stitching and everything on it actually does seem really impressive. 
All of the seams are taped, so it's completely waterproof, water resistant, nothing is going to be waterproof. Um, and yeah, the volume inside is really nice. Roll top, I got um, a Y strap put on top, so you can, so like where I've got my water carry now, if I want to put a water bag on top, or you know, if you want to carry an extra mat or whatever you want, you can strap it on top. One mess pouch on the outside, two pockets in DCF, again, same material as the main um, pocket on the outside, really simple tension on the side. Nice, <clears throat> so far very comfortable straps. You've got a removable um, sternum strap, chest strap there, and also a removable hip belt strap. And they do different accessories. You can get a padded hip belt, you can get hip belt pockets, you can get strap pockets. It's quite nice and easy. I've used, I've put it with my OMM um, chest pouch, chest pod as I think OMM call it, which works really well, fits nicely, everything I need to hand right in front of me. I've talked about that before, but I really like it. It's a good setup. I wanted a really clean, simple setup. And then you've got space here, you can put water in. I've got tent poles on the outside. And I've got full on overnight kit in here, waterproofs, tent, everything else. Uh, mat, quilt, you know, food. Uh, well, Meg's got the food actually, but I've got the cooker and first aid kit and stuff. So you can see you're sleeping that through the back. Yeah, you can. You can see the yellow of it through. Mm. Um, the incredible thing is the pack itself, without the pod, the pack itself, as it currently is spec, 295 grams, which is hella light, even for a frameless pack. I've got other frameless packs like my ULA CDT um, and our day packs. And I've used other frameless packs in the past, but that is really good. And what I wanted, um, aside from something that was clean, simple, light, was something that ideally I didn't have to use a, an actual dry bag liner. I like using Hyperlite Mountain Gear pods, which I can show you, and I, they're in what, some of my older videos um, to organize stuff. And I, th I feel like with those and then a DCF bag that's got tape seams and a roll top, even in really heavy rain, which I have experienced with my HMG pack, you're pretty safe. My current HMG pack that I still have, my Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 34, is just, it's too big for most things. In winter or, or for longer carries or more weight, it's brilliant because it's got a bit of support inside. But I really wanted something smaller. Anyway, I don't want to bang on about it too much. I'll do a review at some point. I just wanted to tell you it's a new pack. I'm excited. I love gear. Ah! <laughs> Tough going up here. Yeah, it's all right, slog. Wow, the light is over this way as well. Everywhere those Come up a ways now. We're only just off of this next sort of pole up to the third one row of the day. Just like here ahead of us. But it's been tough old going. <laughs> How would you describe that pull that we just did up from the Villa? How would I describe I mean, it? Without swearing. Without swearing. Um, <laughs> this is a family channel. Uh, a wee bit tricky. Hey guys, coming at you with a little update. Bring you up to speed with what's happening on the mountains. Stunningly beautiful still, which is nice. And we just bagged our third Munro for the day, which is Stobdev, which is the hill of the stag, I think, or the peak of the stag. 
in Gallic just up behind us and we dropped down and now we're heading up Ben and up this way so um, that was 998 Ben Kruchen's the biggest mountain in Argyle 1124 meters I think so yeah 26 1126 one of those two so we're heading up and we're going to try and find somewhere I don't think that you can camp on the summit of Ben Kruchen there's just no room from what I understand but um, there's either a saddle before or after so yeah we've got loads of time actually so we're doing really well it's um, only just coming up for five o'clock and we only set off at like after 11 so yeah we've done we've paced it to be honest which is quite good <laughs> so now we can kind of once we get up and find a place to camp we can chill out even if we camp below the summit we might take a walk up to it or whatever decide what we want to do um, yeah basically just want to find a not really nice spot we were actually more sheltered out of the wind we were getting battered at one point really really gusty and uh, yeah then watch the sunset make some food just chill out have a good night's sleep set the alarm for early wake up for sunrise and uh, check out if we've got a cloud inversion what it looks like in general I mean it's gonna be beautiful it's already beautiful so yeah it's going well at one point I was feeling like I was getting a little bit of cramp in my right leg but that's that subsided I only sort of, for like two minutes I suddenly just felt like it's slightly crampy and then it passed so we're all good yeah let's head on up and find a place to pitch the tent for the night I guess Ready to pitch now. <laughs> that time of the day now, uh, the fatigue sort of sets in. Yeah, can feel oh, 1,000. Yeah, 1,900 plus. I think. Whew. Beautiful, though. Stunning. Nice deep drop down there, you know, out towards the aisles. We're just below Ben Kruchen. That's Ben Kruchen, literally right here. So I see what, I don't actually know how high up we are right now. 940 meters. So what are we? 100, just, just over to, just below 200. So like 190 meters below the summit. Um, we are up at 1,000. We've kind of dropped back down into this little saddle that you then come back up again. But I've looked at the map and there really aren't any spots that you can pitch on. There's, there's really nothing up here um, that's going to be flat all the way until you drop down. I can actually see you four people coming down that ridge line. <laughs> it's quite cool. Hmm. Really silhouetted. Until you drop down all the way and there's a little lock and down as you come off the other side, um, which is kind of the way that you drop down when you're going back down towards the hydro. But as we've come along here, we've seen a couple of really nice spots. Just about sort of where we're like 960, 970 meters up. Nice flat space and we're going to have a cracking view of Ben Kruchen ahead of us. All of the hills opening around us. Um, so yeah, there's, there's really no point. Otherwise we're just going to end up continuing on and, and wasting what's a good spot with a good view. So we've done 2,000 meters of, uh, 1,900 meters of ascent for the day. And yeah, we're, all, we're just off the fourth summit. I mean, it's not an issue. We could take our packs off and go up there, but we're going to get it tomorrow morning anyway. So I think neither of us are that bothered. We know that we can, we could have walked up there if we wanted to, but quite comfortable, happy to set up the tent, have some nice tasty food and just chill out. So we're going to walk just back along here to a really good little spot we, sh we, um, we found. And we'll show you once we set up the tent and everything. And um, yeah, just chill out and watch the sunset. Take it easy. Loving life. <laughs> It's nice to be doing what you love doing. Isn't it?
always make sure that your water's stable so you don't scold the living crap out of yourself or soak your, your quilt. It's my Worst case scenario, set fire to everything. Word to the wise. The old trusty Soto wind master. It's a master of the wind. It's the best, honestly, in my opinion, the best stove that you can buy. The best of this type of stove, so a canister mounted stove. It just works so well. It's well made, Japanese engineered. Just a top quality bit of kit, really. I think MSR basically copied it with the Pocket Rocket Deluxe, but I like the Soto one. It's real good and it's not heavy. Like you can use a little BRS or something. They work great, the little sort of 20 quid on Amazon, 25 grams. Whereas this is like 80, maybe three grams or something. But it's worth it. It works in, yeah, even if you've got wind or- um, It masters it. <laughs> yeah, cold. It's got a little preheater in there so you can always, if you want to, when you're in really cold weather, use your lighter against the little tube that runs up here to preheat the copper tube and it then will work better and more efficient. Yeah, it's a real good bit of kit. I'm just going to grab this. Lid. Oh, it's very sunny. It's beautiful out here, isn't it? It's just incredible. Absolutely stunning like. You are a mere silhouette of a man. Should I show people our setup? Views. It's the sun just dipped behind Ben Kruchen in front of us. Beautiful light this evening. Wow. It's just incredible. Show you our little dinner spot here where we are. Ooh. There's Maggie's with Ben Nevis over to her left in the distance. That light is something else. Just bimble just over from our tent. There's our tent. What a night, what a night. Got a mac and cheese from Summit to Eat and a... Five bean cassoulet. Five bean cassoulet, yum. Which looks like dog food. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Hopefully it tastes great. Mm, what well, the plan is, yeah, so the plan is basically sit here and eat our food and take in these, quite frankly, incredible views. Um, it's cooling down nicely up here because there's a fair breeze. Kind of just a little bit out of it where the tent is, it's quite in it. Um, but it's overall mild because it's been sunny all day. Gonna get pretty cold tonight. I think it'll drop down to around four-ish. It'll feel a bit colder with the wind. But yeah, dead warm. Brought my PhD down jacket up, which is super light, but super warm. Maggie's got her down jacket as well. Just thought it'd be better to be snug. It's nice when you chill out after you've been hiking all day. Did you see someone? Oh yeah, yeah they're just standing on the, on the summit. summit. Yeah. Gonna be getting some good views, huh? Mm.
watching an absolutely stunning sunset. That's the colour we're seeing. Maggie's all snugged up in her down. <laughs> Quite a show the colour's putting on the scene, isn't it? Yeah. Sky is incredible and I think we've got the stars yet to come. Yeah, I... not quite yet. No. I just love the, the variation of everything. You've got like this hazy blue. Yeah, this way. And then it goes into this violent orange. Over towards Ben Nevis here, it's so blue in the distance, really like blue. a cold blue almost. Yeah. That way, then... it looks freezing. Yeah. <laughs> totally different vibe, isn't it? Incredibly blue. So many mountains. The layers are just something else. And then you turn around this way towards Pencrochen, towards the west, and woohoo! That is just something else, right? West is best, everyone. <laughs> west is best. Wow. Pretty special. It always makes me feel a little bit emotional, to be honest, when I watch the sunset for some reason. It's just got that effect, doesn't it? Especially when you're up in the mountains, it just feels so special. Like, I've said special like six times, but it really does. Yeah. Beaut I think that's beaut, isn't it? With the three mountains in the middle? No, beaut doesn't have any mountains on it, it's flat. That'd be Aaron, probably, right? Yeah, that would make more sense, because Butte's like that way, isn't it? Butte would be in here somewhere. Like that. Oh, I don't even know, I'd have to look on the map. Colours just keep changing as well. It's gone through so many different shades. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Comes tired Meggies. <laughs> yawn face. A puffy yawn face. Oh yeah. What an incredible evening. Yeah, I'm just coming this way to get the... Yeah, there's a teeny little sliver of moon that's peeking out. Just out over here. You can't, you can't see. There's too much sunlight still on the camera. Um, just to the left of Ben Kruken and these lovely pinks happening, fading into a really soft evening light. Blues are starting to take over. There's this one puff of cloud that's been above... Yeah. You can, moved. it's just over there. It's not moved. It's above Benimi, I think. Yeah. Benimi and the cobbler. It's just, just sat there. Just so cool, made isn't itself it? at home. We're just pinkling back down to the tent now, just over here. There's our little home for the night. And just going to take it easy a bit and then kind of watch as the stars come out. Because it's such amazing weather, we can have the doors open, even if we climb under the quilts and warm, stay snug and warm. Because it's not cold, but it's definitely cooled down. Yeah, and the, There's a decent the breeze. Makes it yeah, and the fact that we're nearly a thousand meters up as well yeah, makes it cooler. But it's definitely not too bad. I feel I feel nice and warm sat out here. Yeah. I, well, without my gloves on, my fingers were getting cold. But yeah. Home in the mountains. Looking forward to seeing what the sunrise looks like already. I'm excited. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Over that way. Give us a whole different perspective. And now we can climb in here and get snug. Mm, comfy.
Well, as you can see, <laughs> we're tucked up. We're in our quilts and we're in the tent. We've, had, we've eaten <laughs> almost yeah, all the food, apart from breakfast and coffee. There's almost no food left. I think there is no food left. I've got some Oreos. You got Oreos left? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm only just finding this out. I would have a hundred percent eaten those. Yeah. I'm tempted tomorrow. to eat them now. No, no fuck that's that. Oh, that's unbelievable. Oh, We're gonna yeah. need snacks and sustenance. It's. I know. I know. You've been stomach. holding out. Hey. Jeez, this is what you get. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's um the stars are starting to come out outside. It's taking ages for the light in the west here to kind of disappear enough, but I think it's going to be a beautifully starry night. So. If I can manage to wake myself up at some point and stick the phone out, I'll try and show you guys. I'm not sure it'll come out much. Might. I'd like to look at it myself. Might even go out there. I am feeling tired though. Mm. It's only just coming up for nine, but it was a big day. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely to be physically tired. It, I always sleep amazingly when you're just absolutely shattered mm. like that. It's really good. And. What else? Yeah, I re the new pack was really comfy today. That Bomphus Iterus, actually <laughs> super comfy. I mean, it helps that you obviously you've got to have not much weight in a kind in a pack like that. Sounds like a Greek philosopher. It, yeah, like Icarus. Iterus, it? That's yeah. A, not a philosopher though. That's oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, so yeah, really really comfy. I actually really liked it. So so far so good. It's early doors though. Need to test it in some filthy rain and see what it's like. I've been thinking about getting some sort of watch for hiking with lately, like a smart watch mm. that will link up with um, my View Ranger app so I can see like a small map and directions. I just feel like it would be quite handy for just easy navigation. Obviously, it's not going to be the only thing you rely on, but it can be really helpful sometimes to just be able to glance down and see if you're heading off of track particularly where there's trackless areas and you've pre-programmed like a gpx track which is definitely the best way if you know where you're going so yeah i've been thinking about that i've looked at a few different options i quite like a look at the casio one they've all got downsides the battery with most of them oh. the same with the apple watch which is you know oh you can't see because i'm lifting it in front of the hmm. camera but charging behind us it's been yeah. dying all day that's the problem with any of these smart watches that's why you can't really beat like a good old school. This is a fully automatic, so you never have to do anything. And it just works. I swim in it, run in it, smash it around. It's doesn't super tell good. You your heart rate, though, it doesn't do your anything really. <laughs> I mean, it does what watches were originally designed to do. So it tells yeah. you the time and it's even the got the date on it as well. Oh, fancy. Yeah. But I, I don't mind about the heart rate and all the rest of it. I would like to have an altimeter, barometer and maps. Yeah. It would be quite cool. So, yeah, I might have a look. Well, I have been having a look, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm sure I'll end up with one. <laughs> Calls. But I just want to say good night and uh, sleep tight. I know we will. Good morning, everyone. Some beautiful things happening outside the tent right now. Some lovely morning light happening. And there's Benny setting up breakfast Hi. and coffee. Just gonna warm up the gas canister a little bit. <laughs> the gas canister is cold. And then we're gonna make like some coffee it? and some porridge. Hmm? See the summit of Ben Crokin. I'll show you. That's the summit. And that's the view. So we're just coming up to sunrise. We've got about five minutes till sunrise. As you can probably tell from these colours. Wow. The layering again this morning is just something else. Whew. Beautiful. No cloud inversion, sadly. You can see that there's 
cloud off in the distance here, there would be cloud inversions over that way. There's a little bit down here. Sort of more foggy, cloudy hanging around down low. Just got water here going. Got some porridge. Got a couple of Taylor's coffee bags with some powdered milk. S some extra water still left. So yeah, the plan is to make coffee and porridge and watch this whole scenario happening. So a lot of condensation on the tent this morning with it being so still and so much moisture in the air as well. You can see it's, it's like sodden wet if I... Always fun packing away a wet tent. <laughs> All good, there's Maggie's, contemplating the world. <laughs> it's pretty mild this morning, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy how warm it actually was last night as well. Okay. Especially in the tent. <laughs> yeah, that quilt is massive overkill. Can have a look up over this little ridge, see what it looks like this direction. Over towards Ben Nevis, Lochative. Here comes the main event. As the sun comes up, the water's slowly boiling here. Just using the end of this gas canister, so it's taking its sweet time. But we're gonna have coffee very shortly, which is nice. Everything is pretty much packed up except for the tent, it's drying off a little bit in the sun. Um, it's dead still this morning, it's so strange being almost a thousand feet up and there being virtually no breeze, uh, it's crazy. But yeah, we have had our coffee, our porridge, we're snacked up, coffeed up and we're ready to hit the summit of Ben Kruiken this morning, uh, which you can see in the background there. So we're just going to pinkle our way up to the top of that and then back down the ridge line, hit the hydro track, and then find the car, which is over there somewhere. As always, no trace left. Our camp spot, you can kind of see a little bit of flattened grass over here, and that's it. Nothing else, everything that we packed in, we packed out. Actually, we didn't find any rubbish on this route, so can't take out extra rubbish, but normally we do if we find anything, and we will if we find anything on the way out. That's us heading off. Let's get going. It's warm.
Welcome to the summit of Ben Kruchen, our final Monroe of the weekend. Number four, that's three, number four in the back. <laughs> so yeah, now that's the end of all our ascent as well. We're gonna drop down off here and slog back round to the car a good few miles. So this is 1,126 meters up, the highest point in Argyle. Yeah, so that's, that's the plan and we've made, with an, we made an adventure dog friend. <laughs> but we dropped down off of Ben Kruchen which is actually surprisingly difficult. It's a steep descent and because there's been so much rain recently, like a lot of rain recently, it's, um, in general, it's meant that the rocks have obviously all been churned up with the soil and loosened. And then the last couple of days, or the last three or four days, have been really sunny and warm. And so it's dried it all out. So you just got a hell of a loose rock and gravel on the descent. I took at least two slips descending. Um, we were going pretty quickly and on the sort of second part of the descent, as the gradient eased off, we were running down. So I'm real sweaty now because it is a warm day. And as you drop down lower, you come out of the breeze and it just gets stiflingly hot. But it's been an awesome trip. I mean, what an incredible set of both sunrise and sunset that we had. Or sunset and sunrise rather, that way around. And uh, yeah, so lucky to have that in the mountains. 2,140 meters of ascent we've done so far and I don't think there's gonna be a lot more. And I'm not sure on the mileage, but we'll we'll put it up. We'll put up all the stats for you so you can see what we did. And um, yeah, hopefully look her up for the next one. If you want to check us out on Instagram at, at, at Outdoor Intrigue, we start doing a bit more again on there and putting up stories when we're out as well. And uh, yeah, hit on on YouTube. Remember, if you want to see our videos regularly, hit subscribe, and you can always hit the little notification bell so that you know when a new one's coming out because we're publishing them fairly regularly at the moment. We're trying to keep up with kind of our own adventures quite well. So that's kind of cool. And if you've got any questions or anything you want to know, then um, yeah, ask us in the comments and we'll always get back to you. I said I was going to talk more about gear this trip and I didn't, I did a little bit. Our pack weight was, Megan was carrying 6.1 kilograms wet weight, that's including food and water. I was carrying 6.3 kilograms wet weight. That's everything included apart from worn weight. The only things I'm excluding from that weight are the clothes and the shoes that we're wearing, nothing else. Everything else was included. So it was pretty lightweight.